All right, guys, welcome. Today we're gonna to be doing a first person review of the 511 Rush 24. Before we address the Rush 24, let's talk a little bit about 511 and why they're kind of a controversial topic in the gun industry. Before 511 became the clothing company for gray men and federal agents everywhere, 511 was actually originally started as a rock climbing pant company by famous rock climber Royal Robbins. He wanted a better pant for climbing up the steep peaks in Yosemite National Park. However, he eventually sold his company to a man by the name of Dan Costa, who noticed that the FBI agents at Quantico really liked the 511 pants, hence why they are the tactical company that they are today. They've been like that basically ever since the early 2000s. Nowadays, they make all sorts of different kinds of gear. However, they do face a lot of flack because the vast majority, if not 100% of the gear, is made overseas. They also get a lot of flack in the civilian tactical community because they never really directly advertise to civilians. Their main market seems to be federal agents, police officers, and occasionally they'll pander to the boomer idea of a prepper. However, I think the biggest mark against them is that Tim Kennedy, is their biggest brand ambassador. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you how I feel about Tim Kennedy. Yeah, I believe gun control is a massive solution. The Rush 24 is designed, allegedly, to sustain someone for 24 hours. How long this bag sustains you is basically completely dependent on your gear choices and how much you're willing to go without or with. For a lot of people, this is gonna be a 12 hour bag, 24 hours. However, if you're smart, you could probably make this bag last up to 48 hours. It all depends on what you're doing and what exactly you're preparing for. Me personally, this bag bag has served as my main bag for going on day trips, if I'm spending overnight at a family's house, if I'm going out in the woods for just for the morning or for the evening. This is a perfect bag for that. It carries the right amount of gear without being without having so much room that it sags when it's not fully loaded. It's a 37 liter bag, which is a lot. You can fit a lot of gear in there, a lot of clothing, whatever else you plan on using your bag for. The bag has two main compartments. You have the large compartment up here, which itself has three separate compartments and a laptop carrier. And you have this main front compartment right here. It has these two pouches right here, which are perfectly sized for fitting a 20 round Stanag AR-15 mags. However, you can also fit whatever else you can. I've seen people use these for battery packs or whatever. Got places for pens right there, another pocket right there, another pocket right there, two more pockets right here, and last but not least, another pocket right there. So organization like crazy. But the good news is, is if you're not into all the pockets, that's okay. They're, they lay pretty flat. So if you just want to load this full of crap without organizing it, which I have done many times, it is more than capable of doing so. One of the fun parts of the 511 Rush 24 is that it does have a concealed carry pouch right here. Now this pouch is huge. Back when I was a 1911 owner, this thing could easily fit a 1911 and a bunch of 10 round mat. Now I do not recommend concealed carrying in your bag exclusively. That's really for example, let's say you're at a family reunion and there's a lot of little kids. Well, if a little kid goes into your room and sees your concealed carry on the table, that's gonna make for a very awkward family reunion. However, if you put your concealed carry in here, which by the way, my Glock 19 with my T-Rex arms holster fits in here. There's a ton of room in here. Um, it's a great place to hide it and most bags don't do that. So the chances of someone checking for it are extremely minimal. So it's a safe out of the way place for you to store your handgun when it's not on you, which by the way, should probably be most of the time. This this little pocket, they don't really talk about this, but I've also used this for just like storing empty magazines while I'm at the range. Um, you could fit all sorts of crap in here. I think at the very bottom is a knife I put in here forever ago and forgot about. So, I mean, it is a massive pocket. You can really fit a wide variety of things in there. So it's a really easy to access pocket. Um, it's kind of like a smaller version of that pouch thing that the Rush 72 has. So anyway, I really like that as well. It's also got these two smaller pockets up here. Again, more organization. I've typically use these in the past to store batteries, flashlights, little flashlights, little fire starting equipment, whatever. Again, it's completely up to you. In each of these, you have a pocket here, which as you can see, got a battery and it's got a little pocket in there. But again, they lay flat enough that if you just want to throw stuff in there, that's totally fine as well. It's also got in the back here, there is a glasses holder. I've got my normie glasses in there right now as I am rocking my sunglasses, but that's a safe, good place to put your uh, glasses. Last but not least, in the back, there is a place to put a hydration bladder. I don't typically use those anymore. They just got gross too quick for me. If that's a feature you're looking for, this absolutely has it. Now, the yokes on here, they're not my favorite. They're not the most comfortable thing in the world. Um, right now, I'm using a Mystery Ranch TerraFrame 50, which blows this thing out of the water when it comes to comfort. However, um, it is comfortable enough. I mean, it's not, it's not 
not like an Alice pack, <laughs> you know? Like this is definitely comfortable enough, especially if you're just loading up for a day trip, this should be perfectly fine. Now the question is, is can this fit a backpack, a sleeping bag and a, and a sleeping pad? Um, if you get the right gear, barely. I mean, there's places down here, as you can see, where you could, in theory, just lash down a tent or whatever you want down there. Um, I've seen people go backpacking with 24 liter bags before. Uh, there's a guy in my Discord who, I mean, his his outdoor setup was like an 18 liter mystery ranch bag. So, you know, I mean, people, can, you can make it work if you buy the right gear and if you're willing to go without. Um, however, I like to leave with a lot of different types of gear. Um, that's just me. Um, as I gain more skills, I'm sure some of that gear will go away, but for those of you that have things like um, CZ Scorpions or maybe even Honey Badgers and things like that, I don't think this bag is, is uh, big enough to carry those. However, just so you know, when you break down a 16 inch AR-15 like mine, um, only this much will be sticking out the top of the bag. So if you have a Mark 18 type build or a 75-300 blackout build, once it's broken down, you could probably fit the whole thing in the bag. Um, yeah, it's a very utilitarian bag. This ha bag has a lot of utility and the Molly is really useful for customizing the bag to what you what you need it to do. Like right here, I have a tourniquet. Um, is this the best place to put a tourniquet? I mean, it's better than having it in the bag, right? So this is what works for me. I'm not saying it's the most optimal thing. Now, Molly, I, I mean, on a bag, it can look kind of tacky and I would say it kind of looks tacky here. I mean, if you're like going to work or school with this, I mean, you might get some weird looks, but nothing too crazy. I think Molly's a relatively normal thing to see on bags now. I think they did go a little overboard. Like, I don't know why you'd want Molly up here, for example. Now, I bought this bag three years ago, and basically every weekend since, I've been in the mountains. I've been in the desert. I've been in the deep woods of Idaho. And uh, this thing is held up great. It's incredibly durable. And then I can tell you that from three years of use. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are no holes. The zippers haven't broke or anything like that. The clips are also working fine. I mean, this bag has worked very, very well. I mean, this bag has worked just extremely optimally for what I've been doing, which is a day trip. So the question is, is this actually a do everything bag? I mean, you can't really sustain yourself for more than two or three days at most. So I don't know. I mean, it all depends on what you're trying to do. If you're looking for a bag that you're just gonna take on a weekend trip, I think this thing is absolutely perfect. Um, if you're looking for a bag to sustain yourself in the woods for a long time, depending on your skills and what you feel like you need, probably not. I think the Rush 72 is probably gonna be better. Now, I think the biggest downside of this bag, guys, is that it is heavy. One of the big reasons why you would take extra weight, the only reason you'd want extra weight is if you wanted more capability. Let's Let's take, for example, my AR-15 optic setup. Now, it's really easy to overload your rifle with a very, very heavy optic, right? A lot of people will put on like a four to 16 scope or whatever and make their gun way too heavy. Obviously, I was very weight conscious when it came to my optics decision. Now, obviously, if I was going for just weight savings alone, I would just have a ScalarWorks Leap setup or ScalarWorks Iron Sight setup. That would be far and away the lightest optic setup you can get is some ScalarWorks Iron Sights. I think the whole setup weighs less than like two or three ounces, incredibly lightweight. However, I want capability. That's why I went with an 11 ounce prism and a two ounce red dot sight. So yeah, I have a 13 ounce optic setup, but it is incredibly capable. It's the same kind of thinking, right? You want to make sure you use your weight budget effectively, that you're spending your weight budget on things that make sense. And in my opinion, this bag makes a lot of sense. It's incredibly durable. It's incredibly rugged. It's going to last you a really, really long time, especially if, you know, you're stumbling through the woods or you're throwing it on the ground in the desert or you're throwing it on really hard rocks in the mountains. This is a bag that's going to hold up. So if that sounds like the kind of bag you need, I highly, highly recommend this bag. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next review is going to be the Hill People Gear chest rig that I have in here. And then at some point in the future, I'm going to be reviewing my my one Tigress chest rig that was sent in to me by one of the viewers. Thank you so much. You know who you are. Really appreciate it. All right. Love you guys. I'm going to get out of here before the motorcycle uh, fags find me. So peace out.